Hi everybody, welcome to my home and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. We're going to go over a little bit of this article. Uh, this is called Elder Bednar, These Days Are a Remarkable Season in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And we've heard that before from him. There's a couple interesting quotes in this. Um, I have Mindy to thank from Temples of Jesus channel. She's one of the ones I interviewed the first time that I uh, did interviews with sisters that were starting YouTube channels. Uh, she assures me that she's going to make more videos pretty soon. She's been busy lately, but make sure to subscribe to her. I'll probably do an interview with her again, but she has a lot of good insights. She also has this very interesting video uh, where... Uh, this is a 70 that says that President Nelson said there's only two things left before the second coming. So uh, I would encourage you to watch that, uh, but subscribe to Mindy. Okay, so there's just uh, two quick quotes, but uh, they are quotes that I want for my spreadsheets. I'll show you what I got. Um, let's do this last one first. Okay, so this is Elder Bednar in California. And uh, I didn't I didn't bother to check if this was like, I think this is this was like a different occasion, like still like the same trip to California, but I think he's maybe in a different location than where he was with uh, President Holland. I'm not sure, but he's in California. It says um, Corona California Steak Conference in Corona, California. Okay, so he says, despite the great commotion in the world that seems to get more difficult, said Elder Bednar, it is also a time of miracles. And saints can look to the Savior for hope, healing, and strength. Not sure why I didn't highlight that. It's a time of miracles. And uh, President Nelson has told us as much. In fact, in his talk, which I, I didn't think to pull up, overcome the world and find rest, he said something super interesting. Remember, this is the quote that I always reference where in the footnote... He refers to where he cites uh, Joseph Smith Matthew 136. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The only time using the scripture citation index, this website right here, that I've seen a prophet cite a scripture talking about the sign of the Son of Man. So I would pay attention. But he says here, But my dear brothers and sisters, so many wonderful things are ahead. In coming days, we will, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Between now and the time he returns with power and great glory, or in other words, the sign of the Son of Man, he will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. I feel like already I've seen that myself in my own life. Uh, just for example, I know I keep coming back to this, but me being able to go to Kirtland and cover that event, the eclipse, and just like the the newly purchased uh, Kirtland Temple and um, share that with you. that The way that that happened, it was a miracle. I still can't wrap my head around how that all happened and just like the feelings that I felt. But there's been a lot of other things too um, in my personal life. And some of you have shared things uh, that have happened with you, miracles. And, and feel free, put it in the comments. Uh, if you feel like you've experienced this, what President Nelson is talking about. But anyway, back to Elder Bednar. It is also a time of miracles. And saints can look to the Savior for hope, healing, and strength. And also, according to uh, this last general conference, this is also a time of angels. That was one of the big themes of April 2024 general conference. Miracles, angels, <coughs> privileges blessings. Okay, this is Elder Bednar, quote, We live in a remarkable season in the history of the Lord's Church. In this grand season, he's repeating it again, uh, at this, uh, as this acceleration of the work continues in all the world, please express your gratitude to be alive now. I like that because sometimes we just complain and complain. I do it. I know that you do it. Well, I'm not going to say all of you. But we tend to complain about the state of the world and how stressful it is, how depressing it is with all the wickedness. But I prefer to be more optimistic. And I like this. I think that we should be grateful that we're here to witness this, to live in such an exciting time, not just in world history, but in church history. And I, I think that most of us uh, 
most of you and me, um, I think that we're going to be around to see the second coming. It's exciting. But anyway, he's referring to an acceleration of the work or like a, a hastening. And then he says two times that this is um, an incredible season. It's a remarkable season and a grand season. Now, this stuck out to me uh, because he has said this before a number of times. So much so that I've now created a new row on my uh, quotes A through Z spreadsheet. It is now currently row 351 called Seasons Greatest in the History of the Church. Um, I already had these on another spreadsheet, uh, specifically on this one called Quotes, Rising Generation. Uh, that's in chronological order. All the quotes that I'm currently aware of where they are addressing a specific generation. And it only goes back to 1966. With the exception of a couple, one that's kind of from Joseph Fielding Smith in, in Doctrines of Salvation, and then one from Joseph Smith himself. But that's a whole that's a whole other topic. So if you have any from before 1966, uh, send my way. If you have any during or after 1966, send it my way. But this is what I have so far. So I pulled some of those over uh, to this greatest or greatest or most remarkable season in the history of the church. And uh, let's just go in order. So just as a just as a reminder, this this is clearly something that is on Elder Bednar's mind because he repeats it many times. Okay, this is from. Uh, church news, uh, messages of inspiration from President Hinckley, May 9th, 1998. I want to read you the words of Peter spoken long, long ago. But ye are a chosen generation, generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter uh, 2 verse 9. My brothers and sisters, we are a chosen generation. This is the greatest season in the history of the world. And we have been blessed to come forward at this time, this greatest of times of discovery. This is the grandest age of all. During my lifetime, there have been more scientific discoveries than all the generations that preceded it. And you and I are upon the earth at this time. I'm just going to end right there because that's... uh, the main part that I wanted to read, President Hinckley saying this is the greatest season in the history of the world. After that, the next quote that I have, this is Elder Bednar, uh, in in evening with Elder Bednar, Elder David A. Bednar, February 7th, 2020. All right, he says, <clears throat> to live on the earth in this season of the dispensation of the fullness of times is the blessing of a lifetime. A number of years ago, President Gordon B. Hinckley repeatedly told me. Now think about that. President Hinckley repeatedly told him, and now Elder Bednar is repeatedly saying this, uh, with today, or what was published today. I'm I'm recording this um, the night of the 12th. Uh, He keeps repeating this. Okay, so President Gordon B. Hinckley repeatedly told me, quote, David, this is the greatest season in the history of the restored church, end quote. And he was absolutely right. Think of the things we are blessed to see. Consider that this year is the 200th anniversary of the first vision. Temples have been announced in Papua New Guinea and in, oh gosh, um, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. We have missionaries in the former Soviet Union and a temple in Ukraine. This is the greatest season in the history of the restored church. We have a particular responsibility in this day. If we have been saved for this day, it is because we have a lot to do, and we have a role in helping the rising generation to be ready. This is the greatest season in the history of the restored church, the greatest opposition, and the greatest opportunities. Together in this day, we have this opportunity to serve, to bear testimony, to minister, and to succor. Okay, now this is Elder Bednar again. In Church News, an article by Sarah Jane Weaver, Press Forward with Faith, Elder and Sister Bednar Tell Snow College Students in Ephraim, October 17th, 2023. Elder Bednar shared 
that while he was in Rexburg, he sat by President Gordon B. Hinckley at a dinner one evening. President Hinckley said to him emphatically, David, this is the greatest season in the history of the restored church. Then he continued, not speaking about me individually, but about our generation. I only have one regret. Sorry, I only have one regret. I will not be here to see it, but you will. So that's interesting. President Hinckley is talking about this being the greatest season in the history of the church, but that he won't be there to see it. And uh, he could be alluding to the second coming or just like uh, the climax of this season uh, just before the second coming. But uh, I think that's why Elder Bendar keeps repeating this, because that's a pretty incredible thing to come from a prophet of God. Right. So th this is really on Elder, Bed Elder Bednar's mind. Um, continuing, Elder Bednar said that a part of the season President Hinckley was referring to is the time in which we now live. Okay. This is part of it. When the church has 335 temples in operation, under construction, or announced, including one in Ephraim. Do we appreciate the season in which we live, he asked, inviting the students to press forward with faith in the companionship of the Holy Ghost in this, quote-unquote, remarkable and marvelous season. I should highlight that. Now that I have this as its own topic on quotes A through Z spreadsheet. Um, and then there's this one that we just read. So this is now one, two, three times that, that I know of that Elder Bednar has said this. He keeps reiterating it, but it originates with President Hinckley. So this is really exciting. Okay, now back to the article. There was another quote. This is a, a different topic, but I want to share it with you. Uh, Elder Bednar shared that in the early days of the Restoration, Latter-day Saints around the world would immigrate to Utah to find Zion. Then, in the 1970s, President Spencer W. Kimball invited members to build up Zion wherever they were. In a similar vein, said Elder Bednar, attending the House of the Lord is an opportunity to take Zion back home. I have this highlighted, um, and I've saved this quote. Oh, by the way, so the, the whole, like, the greatest season, I also put that quote under hastening. There's a bunch of hastening uh, quotes. So in case you're interested, to look at that later. Um, so I put this on my quotes, common misconceptions spreadsheet. Uh, one of the misconceptions is that the entire church still has to be gathered to New Jerusalem in Jackson County, Missouri. Uh, there's the belief that uh, the entire church, or at least uh, the righteous portion of the church, everyone is going to be living in the actual city of New Jerusalem. Now, I've done videos uh, about this. I actually have a playlist about it. Uh, we've talked about the different definitions of New Jerusalem. But I'm just going to show you what we have here and why, why I put this on this spreadsheet. Okay, so I, and I actually have a new quote that I just put on here. Okay, so it's it's a very key concept to understand um, what's said. It's really key to understand what's said in D&C 101, 20 through 21. And behold, there is none other place appointed than, than that which I have appointed. Neither shall there be any other place appointed than that which I have appointed for the work of the gathering of my saints. This is referring to Independence, Missouri, the future site of... Uh, the center place, New Jerusalem, the city of Zion, the actual city, and it will be built in the future. Uh, it's not going to be Salt Lake City. It's not going to be some other place. That's a complete, I have other quotes for that, um, including President Nelson, President Nelson himself. But then it continues, until the day cometh when there is found no more room for them. And then I have other places which I appoint unto them and they shall be called stakes for the curtains or the strength of Zion. So I, I feel like that's that's clear enough that not everybody's going to be going to New Jerusalem. Um, although I guess you could read this and say, well, yeah, but everyone's going to be living in Missouri. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's not the case. Uh, I'm not going to read this one. This is just Joseph Smith in Journal of Discourses, 
again, reiterating the idea that uh, there are stakes, and that's where you gather to. You gather to the stakes of Zion. He says, I'll read a part of it. There will be here and there a stake for the gathering of the saints. Some uh, may have cried peace, but the saints of the the saints in the world will have little peace from henceforth. Let this not hinder us from going to the stakes. For the Lord has told us to flee, which some people interpret to mean you have to go to Missouri once the city of New Jerusalem is built up. That's the only place that you'll find peace. But Joseph Smith is talking about the stakes. For God has told us to flee, not dallying, or we shall be scattered one here and another there. And then, you know, you can read the rest of that. But I'm going to move on. Uh, Joseph Smith, this is in, um, you can find this on the, the josephsmithpapers.org. Uh, this is notes taken down by Martha Jane Knowlton Curray. Afterwards, read the parable of the 12 olive trees and said, speaking of the land of Zion, that it consists of all North and South America, but that any place where the saints gather is Zion which every righteous man will build up for a place of safety for his children. Okay, next, Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 9, page 138, column A. When Joseph first revealed the land where the saints should gather, a woman in Canada asked if uh, we thought that Jackson County would be large enough to gather all the people that would want to go to Zion. I will answer that question really as it is. Zion will extend eventually all over this earth. And we're, we're living in that right now, you guys. There will be no nook or corner upon the earth, but what will be Zion? Uh, it will all be Zion. I remember that the lady was answered by asking her whether she thought the ark was large enough to hold those that were to go into it in the, in the days of Noah. Yes, was the reply. Then, of course, Zion will be just large enough to receive all uh, that will be prepared to possess it as the ark was. Okay, now here's the new quote. I had actually gone over this before some other time on the channel, but it was, I think, a long time ago before I was doing uh, some of these spreadsheets or any of them. So now I have it. It's been a long time in the making, but now I have it. Okay, this is Erastus Snow of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. The time was in the infancy of this church when our minds were so narrow compared to what they are now. What we looked for, <clears throat> that we looked for the speedy coming of our Lord and the accomplishment of his great work before this time. But as our minds grew and our ideas enlarged, we began to perceive that we were only children in our views and feelings, our ideas and expectations. That's important. We don't want to be stuck at that stage in the past. He's talking about the fact that he, he they moved on beyond they moved beyond what they thought was going to happen. And sometimes when we just like stick to early interpretations of things without looking at the entire story, pulling together all the sources, then we ourselves are stuck with that um, incomplete view that they had in the past. So you have to, you have to take it all, not just the scriptures, not just the early church, not just the journal of discourses, not just anything. You, you put it all together. All right, continuing, we had the views, ideas, and expectations of children, and we see how the Lord has enlarged Israel and expanded his work. And now we behold so much more to be accomplished than that than what has been accomplished, that we are apt in our minds to put off the day of the Lord a great way. The time, uh, the time was that we looked for one temple. The early revelations given to the Latter-day Saints predicted a temple in Zion, meaning the New Jerusalem in Jackson County. And Zion, in our minds at that time, was a little place on the Missouri River in Jackson County, western Missouri. A town and a few surrounding villages or a country, pre-adventure, it may be as large as a county. Uh, when we When we first heard the fullness of the gospel preached by the first elders and read the revelations given through the prophet Joseph Smith, our ideas of Zion were very limited. But as our minds began to grow and expand, why we began to look upon Zion as a great people, people, and the stakes of Zion as numerous. And the area and the area of the country uh, to be inhabited by the the people, <coughs> excuse me, the people of Zion, 
as this great American continent, or at least such portions of it as the Lord should consecrate for the gathering of his people. That goes along with what Joseph Smith uh, said, what we just read a minute ago. We ceased to set bounds to Zion in her stakes. We began also to cease to think about a single temple in one certain place. Uh, Seeing the different stakes of Zion that were being organized, we perceived the idea, possibly, of as many temples. Uh, Having had one spot pointed out in the revelations for the temple in Jackson County, our minds expanded so that in a short time we were building another temple in a stake of Zion in Kirtland, Ohio. A little while afterwards, we were laying the foundation of a temple in Far West, which I'm sure that that'll still happen in the future. And uh, if you haven't been to these sites, you should go. Kirtland, Far West, Adam on Diamond, ja- uh, Independence, go if you can. Seriously. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it here. He goes on to talk about uh, that by and by there will be hundreds of these temples throughout the land. I'm going to highlight that actually. Okay, so you get the idea. So this is the new quote. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, the church has tried to just be really clear on this. They published this in the end sign, um, you know, for the whole church. This is uh, by Graham Doxey. At the time, he was first counselor in the Young Men General Presidency and former president of the Missouri Independence Mission, uh, which I guess is why he was selected to write this article, but it's called Missouri Myths. It's in the April 1979 ensign, and this is myth number two. The entire church will be gathered to Missouri. It, it's not true. That's not going to happen. You gather to the stakes. President Nelson, uh, when he was in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, uh, he says, true, in the early days of the church, conversion often meant immigration as well. But now the gathering takes place in each nation. The Lord has decreed the establishment of Zion in each realm, where he has given his saints their birth and nationality. Scripture foretells that the people shall be gathered home to the lands of their inheritance and shall be established in their lands of promise. Every nation is the gathering place for its own people. The place of gathering for Brazilian saints is in Brazil. The place for gathering for Nigerian saints is in Nigeria. The place of gathering for Korean saints is in Korea, and so forth. Zion is the pure in heart. Zion is wherever righteous saints are. That's that's exactly what Joseph Smith said. All right, I'm going to continue. Um, just a couple more really quick. This is Jeffrey R. Holland before he became president of the Quorum of the, Quorum of the Twelve Apostles from um, the June end sign of 2014, the call to be Christ-like. Um, one of the many unique characteristics of our dispensation is the changing nature of how we establish the kingdom of God on earth. This dispensation is a time of mighty accelerated change. And one thing that has changed is the church of God will never again flee. It will never again leave Ur uh, in order to leave Haran, uh, in order to leave Canaan, in order to leave Jerusalem, in order to leave England, in order to leave Kirtland, in order to leave Nauvoo, in order to go who knows where. No, as Brigham Young said for us all, we have been kicked out of the frying pan into the fire, out of the fire, into the middle of the floor, and here we are, and here we will stay. Of course, that statement became a statement for many members of the church all over the world. In these last days in our dispensation, we have become mature enough to stop running. We've become mature enough to plant our... So in other words, instead of running to Missouri, there's not going to be any running. Okay. We have become mature enough to plant our feet and our families and our foundations in every nation, kindred, tongue, and people permanently. Permanently. Zion is everywhere, wherever the church is. And with that change, we no longer think of Zion as where we are going to live. We think of it as how we are going to live. And this is the last one, and it's going to be Elder Bednar. Uh, This is similar to this new quote that I just added. Okay, so this is from a YouTube video uh, by Church News, April 13th, 2023. The name of the video is Come to Zion. If you take a look at the construction of temples, you begin to see in the 1970s increased construction of temples all around the world. What we're seeing now is an acceleration of what began in the 1970s in bringing the temples closer to the people. 
that is a magnificent thing to behold in this remarkable season. Oh, I don't think I have this one. Remarkable season. I don't have this one on uh, quotes A through Z. Okay. Well, it is going to go here. What, okay, when was it? This is April 3rd, 2023. And this is October. So it goes right. Okay. Holy cow. You see, it's just, you have to keep going over things. Okay. So that is actually one, two, three, four times that Elder Bednar has uh, talked about this uh, remarkable season. Okay, and I'm going to have to highlight that for here. In this remarkable season in the history of the church. Got it. I think this is one of the great indications that the restoration is ongoing. In the early history of the church, the call to Latter-day Saints all over the world was come to Zion, come to, meaning New Jerusalem, Independence, Missouri, uh, Jackson County. Come to Kirtland, come to Nauvoo, come to Salt Lake. And Joseph taught that the purpose of the gathering was so that the saints would be in a position, in a place where temples could be built. That's the purpose. The purpose is temples. All right, continuing. They needed the resources. They needed the skills to be able to do that. But that began to change in the administration of President Kimball when he and other church leaders said, no, stay where you are. Don't come to Salt Lake City. This is not the only place where you find Zion. So for the saints in Argentina, Zion is in Argentina. The great blessing is that in a world that grows increasingly dark and increasingly wicked, access to the power of godliness through the covenants and ordinances of the gospel of Jesus Christ is one of the greatest spiritual resources and blessings the members have. Okay. So, wow, that brought us back full circle to uh, the greatest season in the history of the church. That is so cool how that happened. Okay, so uh, thanks again, Mindy, for uh, sending me this article. I... I'm sure I would not have caught it. So I appreciate you and everybody else that sends me messages and comments and and all that. Uh, That's going to be for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.